right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to Hot Tag Podcast. It is Tuesday, and we're once again back. Our second guest of the night, we got CZW Zone, the bulldozer, Matt Tremont. How you doing, What's man? What's going on, fellas? Thank you, for, thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely, man. I greatly appreciate you coming on, man. Definitely oh, appreciate it. Not a problem. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Now, first off, uh, Matt, how did you get into the business? Uh, my my first, my introductory uh, into the wrestling business was uh, early 2007. Uh, February 2007, I would uh, bump into a uh, group of guys that were pretty much a traveling circus, pretty much, man. They were a group called uh, AWFR, America's Wrestling Fundraisers, uh, run by Dan Luria, uh, another gentleman named Stephen Morgan, Amadeus Thorne, and a few other guys. Uh, I would meet them guys. Uh, they they found me doing stuff in the backyard, and they wanted me to you know properly train. And uh, so I made that next step and ventured into wrestling and would uh, start out pretty much training. And within that training, also working live shows. So I I progressed and learned as I you know worked more matches and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's early 2007 was uh, my when I started and my, you know, first initial bumps and bruises of the wrestling business. Absolutely, man. Now I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Beyond Wrestling. You guys can check them out if you uh, support any wrestling, man. It's the best stuff out there. Beyond Wrestling, uh, you're debuting for them, man. I'm, uh, I'm very excited for this. What do you think? Yeah, now actually, I've been, I've been going out to Providence, Rhode Island, uh, probably for about the last year now. Uh, Beyond's one of the. Uh, one of the promotions I've been working for lately that has uh, not only given me the platform to, you know, do what I do as far as hardcore goes, but I've been able to go out there and actually wrestle and show showcase more than just the blood and guts. Uh, you know, that's my usual bread and butter. Uh, but I'll be going back out there March the 1st uh, at Set Music for their uh, King of Art show. And I think they announced the other day I'll be taking on uh, one of Beyond's homegrown guys and Darius Carter. Always enjoy going out to Providence and uh, and working for Beyond. They have they have a really good thing going there, uh, good live atmosphere and experience, and uh, nothing but good things to say about Beyond. Yeah, definitely, man. That's that's what I love about uh, Beyond Wrestling. I've not been watching it for the last couple of months. It's been busy, but uh, I love the crowd, man. I mean, the atmosphere is is very different. It kind of reminds me of the old ECW. It, it almost seems like the crowd is just you know, hovering over over the ring, and it's just they're just collapsing on top of each other. It's it's, it's an awesome crowd. One hundred percent. I mean, I think their slogan is uh, they try to present to be the uh, the most interactive wrestling on the planet, and I think they have a very good grasp uh, on that. Just just in that you know that whole field and what they and their product that they try to put out. Um, yeah, they you know, and like you said, their uh, the venue itself is special. Uh, I. I would agree on the sentiment of the, the ECW vibe, the, the venue itself. I get an old Elks Lodge feel with the balcony upstairs and the crowd hovering over you and being right up against the ring. So it's a, it's a very special environment. Absolutely. Box man? Yeah. Um, man, I was trying to think. Um, I saw, you know what? I, I saw one of your matches with uh, DJ Hyde. Uh, it was a couple years ago. Um, you bounced off of a table and landed in a web of barbed wire. <laughs> yeah. Get into that a little bit for me. I kind of want to know, you know, just a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was uh, August 2012, uh, the, the one of the CZW stable shows, the Tangle Web and the Tangle Web match itself. Mm -hmm. um, up in that, at that point in time, me and DJ... I w were involved in that program and feud for almost a year at that point. It pretty much started from my, my inception in the combat zone and really started to get hot and heavy in the summer of 2012. Uh, that match itself, um, at that point in time, was it, it was my calling card and, you know, the first time they really, you know, gave me the ball to run with. Like, you know, you know, we're really going to run with you and DJ, and this is the first big match of this feud. And the Tangle Web match... You know, besides the cage of death, is you know one of the one of the big gimmick matches of the year, and one of the most dangerous. Uh, the 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 actual bump <laughs> that you were talking about, uh, DJ choke slammed me off a a very shady structure we were on top of, and we're two big guys, and I would get choke slammed off of that structure. Uh, 
go through and literally be literally was tangled in the tangled web and uh would 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 get hung up and uh my head would hit the table and the uh, would be uh you know pretty pr- pretty cut up from the barbed wire uh, which would later have me at Virtua Hospital in Voorhees, New Jersey, after the show, uh, getting 136 stitches total uh, to close up the wounds on my arm, uh, head, and my obviously exposed ass uh, from that video, <laughs> from that from that one bump. So it, it was a nasty bump. It was a nasty match. Uh, but I look back on that match and few with DJ is, uh, especially that match in particular. That was the night I was kind of like a made man in the eyes of the fans at CZW because they knew I was, you know, was willing to put my body in, in harm's way for their entertainment and, you know, because it's, it's the place I always wanted to be and apply my craft. And from that day on, it's been off to the races. But Great Tangle Web was a nasty one. Yeah, much respect yeah. to that bump, man. That was a hard bump. Definitely. Definitely. Go ahead, Gene. No, I, I watched you uh I watched you at Tournament of Death last year. I was actually there live and you know, that was hands down one of the best best wrestling shows I've ever went to. Uh I saw you against uh Joan Kasai and I I know he's one of your favorites, so uh how excited were you to have that match, man? Because I know I know a lot of people were very excited that Joan Kasai was back in C Z W. He hadn't done too many matches and yeah, that was that was really something special. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, as far as deathmatch wrestling in, in this style and genre goes, uh, Jun Kasai, is, you know, he's he's one of the upper echelon guys. You know, for him to come over from Japan for, with, with working with Freedoms and Big Japan Pro, he's he's one of the top guys. And, you know, for CZW to give me the opportunity I had last year to step into the ring with a legend like the Crazy Monkey, uh, I was like a kid in the candy store, man. You know, it, was, uh, it meant a lot to me. And... Uh, TOD last year I thought was one of the uh, strongest and, you know, really good TODs in, in recent memory. And to be able to, you know, put my name in the hat and be able to wrestle a guy like Kasai, man, it means a lot. And it's, uh, you know, another notch on the belt and, some, you know, something I can look back and watch 10 years from now. I'm like, hey, man, I you know, was able to step in there with one of the greats that, you know, does this kind of wrestling. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think I think what really added to the match was uh, after the match when uh, Danny Havoc came out with a white ball and smashed it on you, I was right there, dude. That was, that, I did not expect that. That was that actually got me. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, another thing, double stomp video, man. Why don't you uh, go ahead and talk about that a little bit? Yeah, man. I think uh, aside from the actual in-ring performance, you know, pretty much wrestling consumes my you know daily life 24-7 now. And something, uh, you know, like I said, outside of the actual performance in the ring, I always wanted to venture into, you know, promotion and something that involved in wrestling. And, uh, you know, being around, you know, and learning from guys from, you know, Smart Mark Video and High Spots and RF, I always wanted to venture into the uh, the, the shoot interview world and launching a brand uh, with a couple buddies of mine. So last year we were able to uh, start Double Stomp Video and I think the, the, the main goal of the entire thing was uh, to give uh, other guys opportunities uh, that may not get a chance to do an interview with an RF or a high spots or a smart mark and give these guys, because everybody in the business has stories and a fan base that wants to hear those stories, and, but may not be able to get to tell them with those three main, main big distributors. So I wanted to launch something to uh, you know get, provide a platform for the wrestler by the wrestler uh, for them, for those guys to tell the story. We were able to do six of those last year, along with some uh, other YouTube exclusive segments we did. And it, yeah, it's been real fun, man. It's something I always wanted to get into and, uh, you know, put, put forth and then, you know, get involved with another brand and a project. It's, uh, it, it's something I enjoy. And, uh, you know, the, the interviews we've been able to conduct and put out uh, have been very memorable, and uh, you know I'm, I'm happy we're able to give guys a platform to to tell their stories and for those guys to make a, a few bucks. It was all about you know branding and merchandising, and giving these guys a platform to do just that, and then they can take these DVDs and then go sell them at their merchandise tables so they can make some money and put some money in their pockets. So I think all in all, on both ends, for everybody, you know everybody excelled. And, uh, you know, they were happy with the product we put forth. And, you know, at the end of the day, the fans get to watch something and they got to put a few bucks in their pocket. Absolutely. That's great. Um, also, uh, I, you know, one of, one of the first times I saw you live was at uh, Extreme Rising. Now, Steve O'Neill was the promoter for Extreme Rising. Now, me personally, I had about three bad experiences with uh, Steve O'Neill. 
So I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on him and uh, how your interactions was with him. Because, you know, for all I know, he, he could be a great guy. Maybe we just had a bad experience with him. Yeah, man. I mean, I I, I, def, I hear that a lot in regards to uh, Steve O'Neill. Uh, as far as myself and getting involved with Extreme Rising, I, I believe the the last show they had at the Armory uh, was two weeks after Cage's death with me and DJ in 2012. And I just went there. You know, I was living locally in Northeast Philly at the time, and I, I wanted to be a part of the promotion because I I saw some saw I saw an opportunity and and some interest. And uh, I went there just to help set up chairs and just, you know, be around and help out. And uh, a spot opened up, and, you know, I was there to fill that void, and they gave me an opportunity. Uh, I, I was, uh, you know, very happy to be a part of it because, you know, it, it was good exposure for myself early on to work with a lot of notable names in the business and veterans, uh, you know, as far as, you know, mainstream wrestling goes, a lot of people are aware of. And, you know, to, to get that exposure with them, I think would be, you know, beneficial for myself. Um, as far as the promotion as a whole, I mean, obviously behind the scenes they had a lot of, you know, financial issues. Um, but, you know, as far as them treating me uh, as a person, a you know, young kid in the business at the time, uh, you know, <laughs> I think for me with them, you know, it, it, it wasn't, you know, big on you know, the financial end. You know, I wasn't making a lot of money with them, but it was an opportunity, and I got to, you know, tangle with a lot of, you know, Balls Mahoney and Blue Meanie and so on and so forth. But, I mean, they always treated me well. But I think yeah, ultimately the downfall of the promotion was the behind the scenes and the finances. And, uh, I mean, because they, they had something there I think could have worked, you know, the, with the good mix of veterans and up-and-coming guys. But in the end, if the, uh, you know, if the money and the finances and the logistics behind everything, you know, behind the scenes isn't working, you know, uh, to, to run a promotion of the scale they were running with the amount of talent, you know, they were running with uh, is, is tough. I, I wish it held up and, you know, continued to go, but, you know, that, that's the wrestling business sometimes. Yeah, definitely, man. It was it was sad because uh, I really think they were up to something, man. That that was something really something special. It, it wasn't really ECW guys just reuniting. It was it was new talent, and it was it was a good balance. I thought it was it was something good, but unfortunately, like you said, you know, sometimes it happens. But it is what it is. Anyway, you're gonna be facing Stockade at CZW 16 at the uh, at the 2300 Arena. Everybody still there? Yeah, the uh, oh, I mean, my, my, myself and uh, Stockade, uh, probably for I mean, we the, the rivalry between the, the two of us actually started uh, at Beyond in Providence uh, earlier last year, and uh, we had we had a Texas Bull Rope match, we had a Fans Bring the Weapons match, and they were very respect, uh, receptive to what we were doing. Now we've been able to uh, bring that rivalry to the combat zone, and you know, uh, to now do it. With him, I have a lot of respect for Stockade. I enjoy his work, and you know, the, the on the three occasions we've been able to step into the ring, we've been able to you know put on something special and something I you know enjoy working with him. And now we get to take that to the the confines of the Howell Halls of the arena, you know, celebrate 16 years of ultra violence, and and do it at the famous Bingo Hall. So I'm 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 looking uh, very much looking forward to it, and uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun on Saturday working with him in that arena and get a little ultra violent. Definitely, man. I'm definitely excited for that match. And uh, you know, it's, it's been a couple of years since we got an ultra violent match at the arena, so this is uh this is this is special. Oh yeah, for sure, man. All great. It's uh, you know we haven't been there in a few years. We, you know we've been in Jersey at the skate zone. You know the the arena's been back open. I mean, I'm, Ring of Honor's been there. Chikara's been there. Uh, like you said earlier, House of Hardcore has been there. But, uh, you know, besides ECW, CZW was, you know, we were there for a good 10 years and, you know, was the promotion that held the most shows, you know, in those walls. So to return for an anniversary, a homecoming, you know, all, all together and one that, man, it's going to be fun. Fun for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you've worked with uh, CZW for a while. Now, CZW, when I got introduced to it, I got introduced to it right around 2001. It was pretty much all death matches. Now CZW has a, has a, has a really balanced roster. It's, it's you know it's high flying wrestling, it's technical wrestling. You got the death matches. Uh, what do you think? Do you like it? Did you like it when uh, Zandig was running it, or uh, do you think do you think it's much better with a uh, high behind it, the company? Uh, I think you'll get you'll get various opinions because obviously in in, in early two thousand one, like you said, in the Zandig era, uh, ultra violence and hardcore. Uh, 
wrestling in general, I think was at its pinnacle at the time. It was very hot, and uh, I think you know it, it was hot and heavy, and you know a lot of promotions were doing it. Uh, you know, CZ, companies like CZW and IWA Mid South, you know, in that early time period, that's what you know really generated my interest towards independent wrestling, and CZW was always the place I wanted to be. Uh, a lot of times early on, it was just violence for the sake of violence, but at that time, and I think at that point in time and era. You know that's that's what people wanted, and uh, I think, like you said, it's evolved over time. It's it's not as much, you know, violence for the sake of violence anymore. There's story behind it. There's build up. Doesn't happen as often, but I think the matches that happen now, especially with the death matches, uh, there's like I said, with the story and the, the build behind it, they're more meaningful. And when they happen, they're usually a, a blow off to a big feud. Uh, so I think I think it's evolved. It needed to evolve. And uh, I, th- I think it's beneficial uh, going forward for the company and, and all promotions, you, you know, that still, you know, try to uh, partake in the deathmatch realm. Absolutely, man. I think I think DJ Hyde, uh, I think he's a very smart guy. I think, that, you know, he did great with CZW. He's really found, he's really found the right formula to, to, to work for oh. CZW in, in today's era. He's, you know, kind of adapted to the times, which is, which is awesome. I think it's one of the, one of the uh, better promotions out there, man. No, I'm 100%, man. You have to have a little bit of everything, you know, to um, portray. And if you're trying to put forth a product this day and age, as long as you have a little bit of everything, I mean, CZW, besides the death matches, which always gets that bad stigma, uh, the company's always had, even in the early days, you know, tremendous wrestling and uh, talents to come through the through the company as a whole. You know, Best of the Best is always one of the premier wrestling tournaments in, in the independence. So, uh, you know, the company's always... You know, had good wrestling and great talent. Sometimes it'll get overshadowed by the blood and guts. But I think, like, we definitely agree. Like you said, that it's a good mix now, and it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but there's a little bit of everything to, uh, you know, to eat, eat off the plate of. Absolutely, man. I also saw uh, you shared the the, the WWE uh, WWE segment, uh, the interview that they did with uh, Drake Younger. Now, Drake Younger, I think he's honestly one of the most underrated guys. I think he deserves to be on that roster, not just as a referee, but I'm very happy for him because I understand he's happy with that. But um, I just want to know if you ever had any uh, matches with him and, and uh, your personal relationship with the guy. Yeah, man. Uh, when I first got into CW, you know, Drake was still hot and heavy, you know, into the death matches, and then later on would progress and, you know, get get to PWG and, and evolve uh, as, a, as a performer in the ring. I think overall, if you know Drake Younger's career, he can look at. I think he can can be looked at as one of the best hybrid wrestlers uh, of all time of this generation. You know, not only can he do the blood and guts, but he can go in there and wrestle with the best of them. I was fortunate enough uh, to have uh, quite a few matches with Drake. We actually never had a match in CZW, uh, but we we would tangle at uh, multiple other companies: IWE East Coast, uh, IWA Mid South, and probably the most notable match that I had with him uh, was uh, fall 2012, uh, WXW in uh, in Germany. I wound up going over there with CZW and the rest of the crew for a tour over there. And uh, the second night of the tour, uh, when a, on a WXW-CZW joint show, myself and Drake had a uh, memorable street fight. And uh, it was, uh, you know, something I'll, you know, another notch under the belt, man. You know, Drake's one of the best and always, oh, and one of the nicer guys in the business. Always cordial with me. And I was able to learn a lot from him as far as working and doing the deathmatch stuff. And, you know, was, uh, you know, I can look back now and we all see where he's at in, in life and in the business. And he's doing great for himself and, you know, couldn't be happier for, you know, one of, one, one of the good guys. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm, I'm very happy for him. Uh, Boxman, you got any questions? Um, what were some of your influence that got you into the business? Some of the people. Always been an old school guy at heart. A um, couple of my, you know, a few of my favorites early on that really caught my eye as a kid. Um, Buzz Sawyer, Kevin Sullivan, Terry Funk, Mick Foley. They, they were Dusty Rhodes. They, they, they were my favorite as far as their in-ring performance, uh, the characters, and promo-wise, uh, how, you know, how they talked. And just you know how they portrayed themselves and mannerisms and facials and really how you know how they how they moved and reacted in the ring is you know something that caught my eye as a kid and still do today that I still watch and, and study from. But so, uh, guys like Funk and Foley, 
uh, and, and Dusty Rhodes, Kevin Sullivan, those guys, you know, were some of my favorites as far as the mainstream wrestling guys go. Nice. Yeah, some great yeah, – all, all those guys are great, especially, you know, like you said, Terry Funk and Mick Foley seem to be the two guys that all the uh, deathmatch wrestlers seem to love. And how can you blame them? Absolutely, man. Also, um, CZW, Tournament of Death this year, are you going to be in there? Oh, man, 100%. That is the uh... – that's the pinnacle of deathmatch tournaments. I mean, as as far as, you know, deathmatch tournaments in the U.S. go, you know, there's four big ones. There's Carnage Cup, Masters of Pain, and King of the Death Matches. Uh, all three of those I've been able to, to win. So I, one more tournament eludes me, and, I, you know, that's TOD. So uh, I'm mean, very much looking forward to the, uh, the Woodstock of ultraviolence, as like people like to say. It's an incredible atmosphere and environment when June rolls around, and TOD is always a lot of fun every year. Definitely, man. I, it, it has one of the best crowds I've uh, I've ever attended to, honestly. It, it felt like Woodstock. 100%, man. <laughs> it's always yeah, a lot of fun. Great, great, great day. Definitely. Anybody in the Northeast, definitely go to go to CZW shows, man. The crowd is awesome. The wrestling is awesome. It's, it's good. But I'm not just saying that. I, you know, everybody knows indie wrestling. I support it, so I plug it every week regardless. But, you know, it's, it's good stuff, man. Definitely check it out. Absolutely. Boxman, you got any other questions? I don't have any other questions. I have one more question here for you, man. I know you work with Sammy Callahan. Now, Sammy, Sammy Callahan, um, that guy, man, I mean, he, he can he can go, man. He can go, and, you know, now he's on NXT. He's finally debuting. Uh, any, what do you think of the guy, man? Are you are you happy for him? Oh, well, I'm upset, man. And another home, you know, homegrown guy from CZW. I mean, he was... You know, a Ohio kid that came to CZW, and once he got that, you know, exposure and platform, you know, he took off from there. I uh, wound up tangling with Sammy, I believe, one time uh, a couple years ago before he got called up uh, at the uh, Brain Damage Memorial Show. I yeah, was finally able to, you know, work with him. It was a lot of fun, man. He obviously has the tools and the is factor to be successful. He's in NXT now. Hopefully, uh He'll, he'll finally make that debut, you know, hopefully soon, and then it's off to the races from there, man. Couldn't be happier for the guy. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm I'm also very happy for him. Uh, Abdullah Kobayashi, man. That guy, uh, Big Japan Wrestling, big fan of the guy, and seeing you guys uh, wrestle at a uh, tournament of death, that, 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 was a, that was a brutal match. I know uh, I know you had to be hurting after that match, man. <laughs> that was, that was a lot of brutal. fun. He, 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 he's... He's right up there with Kasai, man, as far as, like, um, you know, my personal two big, two big favorite, you know, Japanese performers were Kasai and Kobayashi. And to be able to work both of them, you know, is you know dream come true for a kid from Jersey that, you know, grew up watching those guys. Uh, definitely, I think out of the two, I think my more memorable match was with Kobayashi. I thought it was really good, and it was, it was a lot of glass and a lot of blood. <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of fun, man. Definitely, man. Uh, if you could place yourself in a match, in a dream match, any anywhere, whether it's Japan, America, Puerto Rico, what would it be? Past, present, whatever it may be. I, I, I think uh, I've been asked this a lot lately, and with the uh, impending return of, of one Nick Gage, I think a lot of people expect me to say that. But I think uh, I think eventually, sometime in 2015, you know, hopefully that will transpire and happen. But I think overall, you know, dream death match or match in general for me uh, would to be in in, in Japan uh, against Onita and his specialty, the uh, the no rope barbed wire uh, explosion match. Uh, was always you know captivated as a kid watching those matches and Onita as a performer. Uh, so definitely uh, venturing to Japan and uh, wrestling Onita, who's still doing them by the way. I think he just did one a few weeks ago. Uh, he's been doing them in Noah and Zero One. So at his age to still go and do those types of uh, matches, that would would, uh, would definitely be the dream match uh, for myself. Yeah, dude, he's 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 still going strong, man. Onita, that's that's what uh, that's also who got me into watching uh, deathmatch wrestling. Honestly, he seems to be the uh, influence to fans and wrestlers also. Uh, one hundred percent can't can't go wrong, man. With Onita matches. Now before I, before I let you go, I got one more question. You also worked with uh, Ian Rotten in uh, IWA Mid South. Uh, thoughts on IWA? And uh, I asked Louie this. Now you work mainly in the in the Northeast for the most part. I've I've seen you at shows in Northeast, and you've also done shows down south. <clears throat> so what's the difference between the crowds? Because I know the Philly crowds are kind of rough. 
The Jersey crowds are kind of rough. The New York can be brutal. How is it down south? Uh, definitely nail on the head, man. The the Northeast crowds, I you know, they're a lot rougher than they are down south, and I think that's because you know they've. I I, I don't want to say spoiled, but as far as hardcore wrestling goes, you know, with, with growing up, you know, with that, you know, they've seen ECW and they've pretty much seen everything under the sun, as far as you know, the, this genre of wrestling. Uh, down south, I, you know, I think they're not more appreciative, but. You know they they don't see it as much when it happens. It's it's a lot more special, and uh, you know it's it it just it just goes with the territory, man. You know those southern crowds, you know for for decades have always been, you know up close and personal, and you know they they really do emotionally invest into the matches and the product. You know those Memphis crowds back in the day were hot, and you know every time I go out to Ian's and IWA Mid South, the crowds are you know still like that. You know very very emotionally invested into the product and the matches. And they really get into it, man. I I always enjoy going out to the Midwest and down south uh, to perform for you know any of the IWA Mid South and, and its sister promotions, East Coast and Deep South, you know, in the Alabama Tennessee area. But uh, IWA as a whole, you know, they've always been good to me. Ian's always treated me well, always taken care of me, uh, and, and you know, and giving me opportunities. You know, I always you know dreamt of, and you know, King of the Death matches, and he's you know he's put me in there with a lot of great guys to learn from, and you know they've. Always taking care of me well. Always enjoy going out there. Absolutely, man. You've, you've certainly done some great work, and a uh, big fan of yours. And uh, best of luck to you, man. We greatly appreciate you uh, coming and hanging out with us. Now, before we leave, do you have any plugs, any upcoming shows you'd like to plug on here? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I, you know, I, I mean, obviously the big one, the 16-year anniversary CCW event this Saturday in Philly. Uh, the following week, I'm at uh, Interspecies Wrestling in, Danny, in Danbury, Connecticut. And a big, big six-man tag uh, that will definitely be a war. It's uh, Chris Dickinson, Pinky Sanchez, and Jocko on one team against myself, Biff Busick, and Izzy Dead yet. So that, that should be uh, interesting and a lot of fun. And then the following day, uh, after Danbury, Connecticut, I'll head you know three more hours up 95 to Providence, Rhode Island for Beyond. And uh, yeah, man, I got busy, busy schedule ahead. So I'm you know very thankful and. Uh, and humble for that, you know, to be able to keep busy and have plenty of work coming up. Uh, you know, plugs wise, you know, if you, if you want to stay up to date with all the, the happenings of the bulldozer, uh, Matt dash Tremont dot com at Tremont CZW on Twitter. You know, I'm always very easy to get a hold of, and you know, always always down to you know talk wrestling and uh, always always just trying to build the brand and uh, you know continue to get myself out there and try to make a few bucks. <laughs> Few, you know, a few bucks doing, it and uh, you know, try to have some fun and enjoy what I, you know, what I've been able to always want to do. So, you know, very thankful and supportive of uh, of the fans and uh, you know, of my work and of the brand of the Bulldozer, and it's uh, it's always appreciated. Definitely, man. We certainly appreciate you coming on here and giving your time and uh, you know, telling telling some stories and uh, enlightening us, man. Greatly appreciate it. And you know, all the SCZW are definitely going to enjoy the show. So, best of luck to you, man. Anytime, you're you're more than welcome to come join us again. We can shoot it and uh, talk some wrestling. Definitely. Appreciate I appreciate it. those. Thanks for having me on, man. You guys take care, and I'll uh, I'll see you Saturday. Thanks, Matt. Take yeah. it easy. Definitely. Have a good one. Thanks. Oh, you two guys take care. All right. Thanks.